What's up guys? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be welding up some Inconel from Tycon Industries. But before we get into that, let me tell you why I'm learning Inconel and what we're going to be using it for down the road. For those of you who don't already know, this is my 1973 Dodge Charger that I have begun swapping a Viper V10 into. My plans, among other things for this car, are to have something like a thousand wheel horsepower out of this Viper V10. And to do that, I'm gonna have to twin turbocharge it. And one of the features of that turbo system is going to be some custom Inconel turbo headers. I have only welded Inconel once before. It was a long time ago. So I have pretty much no idea what I'm doing. And before I start building a set of custom headers with a very expensive material, I need to figure out how to get it to the level of quality that I want this build to have. I want everything to be just as much art as it is functional. That brings us to today's video. And while I figure out how to weld this stuff, I'm gonna show you. So what I've got here is an Inconel weld test kit from Tycon Industries. And actually this is three of them tacked together. I originally just purchased one and tried to make a video on how to do it. And I ran through that whole kit, uh, not making much progress on getting good welds. I ordered two more kits and spent a week trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. I think I've finally gotten to the point where I have some welds that I will be comfortable with putting on my car. So I'm gonna share that week of research with you guys so that you can have a better experience and get going right on some ink and out parts. So you can see my first welds here. These are wire brushed, so they did have color on them. They were pretty sloppy. Uh, this ink and out runs like it's dirty even when it's clean. And from what I actually figured out, these aren't terrible welds for my first time. If you ran welds like this on stainless, uh, that would be a problem. But this is actually pretty normal. As I went down, I got progressively worse because I tried correcting my errors based off of my knowledge of welding stainless or aluminum or titanium. That was the wrong direction to go because this stuff is an entirely different animal. Basically, what I thought was happening is that I was getting the part too hot. So what I tried was moving faster and adding more filler, and that did not work in my favor. In reality, I had to lower my amperage and move much slower in order to gain control of the puddle. Inconel is very sluggish, and it will not allow you to force it to move faster. You will only make it worse. So I'm gonna show you guys my settings and the rest of my strategy for getting welds to go from this and even worse examples to something like this, which is pretty close to the best it gets with Inconel. So we're gonna pop this machine on. We are running 30 amps, no pulse on my purge. I'm gonna be running just a little under 10 CFH, maybe five or six. I'm running 40 CFH on the torch with a number 19 Furic BBW glass cup, 16th tungsten. I used a red scotch bright pad to clean the inside and the outside of each joint. And then we wiped it down with acetone and did the same thing for all of our filler rod. So with that, Let's jump right into some arc shots. Starting off here, you see how long it takes for the puddle to get up to size. That really demonstrates how sluggish this Inconel is. And we're keeping it real low and slow. That is how you get it so that you can see the actual dime pattern. If you move too quick, that will rapidly disappear on you. We're using 045 filler rod and just a quick dab and then when we finish off tapering off the puddle very slowly repeating the process for each one of our welds you can uh, as i do here get tempted to speed up but you really got to remember that this stuff is sluggish and you will just outrun it and screw up 
your consistency if you try to speed up. One thing I'm doing wrong here, which you can see I have a pretty steep torch angle facing forward. That's a no-no with this material. As you can see now, I corrected myself. You want to have your tungsten as close to 90 degrees up and down. It's pretty hard to keep that consistent torch angle on round tube. Do your best to rotate your torch with your wrist as you go around the tubing. I'm using an 045 filler rod, which is very helpful to cool the puddle down. When the puddle gets too hot, you lose complete control of it. So we're just doing quick dabs with the 045, which cools our puddle down and gives us that nice dime pattern. As you start up for the first time on Inconel, you will notice that it has an oxide layer similar to aluminum, which is the reason that we use the red scotch bright pad on the weld zones before we tack it up. That's not something I'll do on stainless or titanium. It's just for things like aluminum and Inconel because they have an oxide layer. Despite cleaning off as much of that oxide layer as you can, you will still have floating debris in your puddle as you weld which makes it difficult to see what's going on. You can see a little bit on the edges of my puddle, that oxide layer as I weld along, makes it difficult to see your toes. Once you complete the weld, it also makes it difficult to see what's underneath that oxide layer. It is important to take a wire brush to your weld immediately after you finish the weld, because if you do not, that oxide layer will become pretty much permanent on there once the weld cools down. So you'll want to run your weld and then quick hit it with a hand wire brush to clean it off and see in more detail what your weld looks like and how you're doing with things like heat input, travel speed, and filler rod application. Despite taking a long time to get up to size, the Inconel penetrates fairly easily. These welds are pretty small, not very wide, and they look cold. As you add the filler, they feel like they're being a little bit lumpy, which is part of the thing that confused me when I first started, thinking that it should be wider and flatter. Even though it looks cold, that's how it likes to run, and it still penetrates quite easily. So even at 30 amps on this 40,000th Inconel, I did not have any issues. Kind of interesting to see that the Inconel does not follow the one amp per thousandth rule as nearly as something like stainless or mild steel do. You can go a little bit lower so that you don't feel like you have to move so fast. So before we get to the results of our Inconel welding, I have a little announcement to make. My goal for 2025 was to get to a thousand subscribers and get monetized. Already in August, I have reached a thousand subscribers so as a little thank you to you guys and a little bit of a challenge for me to get monetized and reach my goal, I am going to be giving away this welder that I have here once I become monetized. If you guys are interested in that, I'm gonna tell you how you can get entered. First off, let me give you some details about the welder. This is a Square Wave TIG 200. I've had it for about two years and it's been awesome. Pretty basic settings, pulse, AC balance, AC DC stick, just the very basic things that you need to do aluminum, stainless steel, titanium, Inconel, mild steel. With the welder, I'll also be giving away everything that comes with it. Number nine, air-cooled torch, the one I use the most. Number 17 for some heavier welding, the foot pedal, ground clamp, plugs, of course, everything you need to run it at home. Not everything with this welder is perfect. The main thing being the number nine torch has a small hole in the line, but some electrical tape fixed that right up. And the point of the giveaway is to help someone who doesn't have a welder get a welder and start welding. It's better than nothing, plus it comes with another torch if this ever does give out on you. And all you have to do to get entered to win this thing is like, comment, subscribe, and share this video or any other welding video on my channel. For every video that you do this process on, you will be given another entry to the giveaway and I will put your name into a random name generator that many times. That will give you a better chance of getting chosen to 
win this welder. Any of you can enter, although I do ask if you already have a welder or the means to buy one yourself, please leave the entries for people who want to get into this and don't have means to buy a welder themselves. I would much rather help someone who wants to do this but can't afford it get into it rather than someone who could do it on their own. No matter what, if you win, it's yours. I'd just like to see it go to someone who really needs it. With that being said, let's get back and check out our Inconel. All right guys, so I did run out of gas. I'm waiting on a delivery, but that's all right. We got enough weld footage here to give you guys a good idea of how this stuff runs. Let's take a look at these welds since you can't really tell from the arc shots how they look. And we'll also take a look at the inside. So as you can see, not perfect, but pretty consistent for the most part. You can see in a few places what happens when you move too fast or get too hot. You kind of lose that definition of the dimes compared to a weld say like that or like this guy. That's kind of just the nature of Inconel. It doesn't uh, lay out quite as nice as some others. And you can see at the end here where I ran out of gas and that just completely wiped out my dime pattern. All I need now is some seat time to really refine that consistency. And we will be all set to build some turbo headers for the Viper engine on the inside here. It's tough to see with how small this tube is but really, really nice penetration, which is really interesting at only 30 amps to me that it penetrated so well, but super consistent. I'm really happy with that. That will make for some really sweet ink and L headers. If you guys haven't already, go check out the playlist for the Viper swapped Dodge Charger. If you enjoyed this video and you like learning about how to weld, Go check out our how to weld playlist right here for more videos that will teach you how to perfect your welding skills.